Tegu lizards. You might have heard them before from popular reptile YouTubers such as Brian Barcheck, Snake Discovery, Rose City Reptiles, or maybe you're one of the poor people that saw that red tegu that looked like it ate a McDouble every day for the rest of its life. God, that was a weird time in reptile YouTube. Now, I absolutely adore the tegu lizard. Great temperament, gets a pretty good size, friendly, outgoing, explorative. It's all the things you really want in a lizard pet. It's definitely what I classify the Labradors of large lizards. Smart enough to be a smart lizard, but when you compare them to other species like the monitor lizards, they are uh, a little bit more on the dumb side, if you ask me. Now, I do believe when it comes to large lizards, the tegu lizard is going to be the best bet for the general population when it comes to the reptile hobby. However, with that being said, there are definitely some things I think you guys should know before you embark on your journey of owning the tegu. Sit down on your couch or any other furniture that you're using right now, strap in, and let's get ready to talk about the tegu lizard. thing I think everyone should know about before getting a tegu lizard is gonna be the size. While that might seem a little bit of an obvious thing, I mean, yeah, that's one of the attractive points of the tegu lizard, the size that they get. It can also be a double-edged sword. While it's really cool owning a big lizard, there are some things you need to know. Now, depending on the species you get of tegus, ranging from blues, reds, black and whites, or chacoans, you're gonna get anywhere from a three and a half foot animal to a four and a half foot animal when it's full grown. What do big lizards need? Big spaces. Now, the recommended minimum size for a tegu lizard is going to be an eight foot by four foot by four foot enclosure. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. When you first get your baby, you're not really thinking about the fact that it can potentially get four and a half feet. That is, your lizard's gonna get this big. It starts out this big, but it's gonna end up getting this big. And while yes, the 20 to 40 gallon aquariums can suffice for now, they will quickly outgrow that enclosure and will demand larger and larger setups until you reach that four, eight foot by four foot by four foot. So now some of you guys are out there thinking to yourself, D Dakota, why, well, of course, big lizards in these big spaces. What's the problem? Well, the problem is I see every other week on Facebook groups, people getting rid of their tegu lizards because now it's too big and they can't house it anymore, blah, 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 which, Again, if it's a really simple thing to comprehend, you know, big lizard gets big when it's an adult. Um, maybe for me, just drilling it one more time in a video will make people think, oh, hang on a second, I know it's a little baby, but that baby will get big and I will need to house that big animal. Maybe I should hold off until I actually do have the space. The size of the animal actually plays two parts into this video. Number one is going to be the actual space that you need for the animal, but number two is going to be the amount of food you have to feed that animal. Again, baby tegu, not gonna eat that much. Couple crickets here and there, you, you get some of that frozen ground turkey, you're good to go for a bit. However, the animal is going to get larger and larger and require bigger and bigger meal items. So that little 20 to $30 shopping trip at the grocery store uh, quickly becomes a lot, lot bigger of a bill. Tegu diet is going to be a little bit more different than your standard monitor lizard diet, where the variety comes into either feeding, you know, chicks, mice, rats, or some various meats to switch it up every now and then. Uh, it's not going to be the same case. Now, tegu lizards are omnivores. Now, what does omnivores mean? They both eat veggies, fruits, and meat. So you are not only going to need to spread a variety of different different fishes, meats, whole prey, just uh, your frozen meats, have whatever have you. You also are going to need to switch it up with the vegetation as well. Collards, dandelions, fruits, a little bit extra as a little bit of a snack. You want to make sure you're feeding more greens and uh, fruits. Don't forget about that part. However, it's a lot more to take into consideration. It's a lot more groceries you're going to need to buy. And if you guys haven't owned vegetation reptiles, maybe you actually don't own a bearded dragon or anything like that, um, veggies go bad very fast. You're going to be making frequent trips to that grocery store in order to quench, hen, quen, in order to fill that lizard's dietary needs. If you're thinking to yourself, okay Dakota, you know, grocery trips every week for the entire year, that's gonna be a little much. Maybe I really can't get it. Well, I got some good news for you that some might like and some might not like. Uh, the good news is you actually don't need to make that grocery shop years round because the fact of the matter is Tegu's brumate for a long periods of time. Now for people who are unaware of what brumation is, brumation is the equivalent of hibernation in reptiles. It's the same thing. They go down for a period of time. They don't want to be disturbed they don't eat, they come out to drink every now and then, and then go back to bed. That's about the case. And throughout those time, you don't really get to interact with your animal whatsoever. Well, it does save you some bills to the grocery ship. You save some grocery store trips and your receipts don't look as long as they used to. You do end up missing the animal. I know, especially when my take is going brumation, I miss them dearly. And it's not like bearded dragon brumation, which seems to be a little bit shorter, only going from like six to two months I found with my beardies over the years. Uh, however, tegus are going to be 
a lot longer. It can differ, it really is the variety of um, geographically where you are, the weather temps, all of that, the, you know, science stuff, uh, we don't want to talk about that here. But the verse of the matter is the fact that Matei Goose, at least in my personal experience, have gone to sleep for at least four to five months out of the year. Almost half the year, you don't even see the animal. It just burrows underground and that's it. It's kind of a big bummer, at least in my opinion, and although you do save a little bit money on the food thing, which is always nice, uh, you do end up missing your pet, especially if you're not breeding these animals and you just have the tegu lizard as a pet, you kind of miss out on that for at least a little bit. Now while tegu brumation is a little bit more of common knowledge, a lot of people do know about the brumation part, just so I throw that out there for people that don't know, uh, this next behavioral thing is gonna take a lot of people by storm, as it definitely took me, and that's going to be our next thing to know, uh, video. <laughs> The oh so fun joys of Tegu puberty. Tegu puberty, Dakota? You mean puberty? What are you talking about? That's for humans, not reptiles. Well there, viewer, you are wrong at that point. Tegu puberty is a real thing. Guberty, as someone named called it, and I guess everyone ran for it, which I have no idea why. Guberty? That's... So we're going with, uh, okay, but moving on, Tegu puberty is a real thing. Now, what is Tegu puberty? Well, just like regular puberty, it is when an animal starts, or the Tegu lizard starts becoming sexually mature. The hormones are changing, the body stuff they're going on again, science, I don't know, the real stuff, but stuff's changing in there, and that animal is going to start acting like a teenager. Just like every other teenager going through puberty, they are hormonal, they are angry, and sometimes they would just want to lash out, and Tegus are going to be no different, folks. These animals are going to be charging you, huffing and puffing, standing on all fours, the defensive body language, ready to attack. And boy, does it seem like it lasts forever. Well, just like with teenagers. Again, Tegu puberty is going to differ on a lot of different levels as far as ages go, how long it lasts. It kind of seems more dependent on the individual animal. If you guys want a little bit more in-depth thing about Tegu puberty, I made a video right somewhere over here that you guys can check out. However, the only thing I can summarize is it is some anecdotal evidence that males seem to last in having more heavier Tegu puberty scene, whereas females seem to be a little less. So if you got a boy, like I first did when I didn't know about Tegu puberty. Buckle up, it is a fun... Oh, it's a good time. It's an animal that's around six months can't do much like bodily harm to you. It's not really like a danger thing. You know, they, they can mess you up. You can get a little bit bloody fingers and bloody hands, but it's not something like you're gonna have to go to the hospital over. At least I don't think in most cases. Uh, I really do believe the real damage that comes with you is going to be um, the emotional damage. They, they emotionally hurt you, my guy. Now think about it this way. You get your pet, right? A six week to eight week old animal, and you start taming that animal down. Down. You got a fearful Tegu that you work with every single day because you love your Tegu. You absolutely adore him. He is part of your family now. And now through these months of you're working with him, you're getting this animal to crawl right on top, hang up on your shoulder. This animal is awesome. You did it. You tamed your animal down and it didn't even take that long. But then that six month period hits. And all of a sudden your happy-go-lucky little puppy Tegu, the little youngling with the still get, just changing the green from the head, it all of a sudden becomes a raging asshole. And it stays an asshole for quite a long period of time. And now you have to deal with it. Again, not gonna hurt you much physically, but this is where it hurts. At least for me. This is, I got, a, I got a little bit of an ego bruising because of Tegu puberty, I'll say that much. I'll round it down to the last thing I want to talk to you guys about today, and that is going to be Tegus are not like the videos you see on social media. They are not puppy dog tame all the time. While social media has done a fantastic job of showing these animals in a positive light, showing that lizards can not only just be cold-blooded eating machines, whatever, but they can be cute, friendly little dudes as well. They might have done a little bit of a too good of a job. The kind of shining Tegu's in a little bit of a false light. Now, don't get me wrong. Your Tegu can be absolutely friendly, come up to you. He'll enjoy little scratches, whatever you have. You can pet the Tegu, hold the Tegu, whatever. The just of just so the matter is, it's not like that all the time. And it kind of leaves a weird expectation, a very higher expectation of people that buying their Tegu's think they're going to be like that all the time, where there are going to be some cases where your Tegu's going to act like this. Oh boy, I really hope a big chunky little lizard boy doesn't pop up and try to bite me immediately.
I think this really is the biggest thing people should know before getting the Tegu Lizard. At the end of the day, although yes, you've seen a million liver puppy dog lizard type videos, um, the Tegu is a reptile. And just like any other reptile, if they've got a mouth and they've got teeth, they can and will use it. And that can inflict some serious bites because while we view these things as little puppy dogs, they are, at the end of the day are a four foot lizard with a big mouth and big jaw pressure that can lead to some very negative effects if you do end up getting an injury from the animal that even could possibly send you to the hospital. It is not to be taken lightly. There are a bunch of things that take in consideration. The size of the enclosure, the amount of food to take into account, tegu purity, brumation, and then finally the actual personality of the animal. Now I'm not saying they're dicks all the time and you're gonna get, these aren't Nile monders, right folks? They're tegus. They can be awesome, but they are not awesome some all the time. That is an expectation you should absolutely set is the fact that don't think you can just reach in and pet your tegu 24 seven. Because if that's the case, one day that hand's gonna come out maybe, uh, you know. I, I tried to do like missing a digit, but I, I don't know why my fin other fingers are curling. But there you have it folks. What you need to know before getting a tegu, but now it's your turn. Leave me a comment in the comment section, all my tegu owners. What is one thing you wish you knew before getting your tegu? As always folks, if you guys are interested in tegu and tegu babies, you want to follow the DBCB Exotics journey. We are currently breeding tegus and I do show them first and exclusively over at Patreon, patreon.com slash DBCB Exotics. You get behind the scenes look of how the breeding project's going, when the eggs will be laid, when the eggs will be hatched, and when the babies will be for sale. If that's something that alien interests you, you can head down right down the bottom of the description right there in the link below. As always folks, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to follow us over here at DBCB Exotics. We'll see you next time, but until then, goodbye.